In this episode, we are going where no game collector has gone before. A brand new gaming experience in the city of Norwich, behind the scenes of a brand new game store before it is open to the public, and for the first time ever, behind closed doors to view one of the most amazing collections I have ever seen. Strap yourself in, this is episode two of The Platinum Project. So two of this, The Platinum Project, my challenge for 2023 to collect every single PlayStation 1 Platinum game release in the UK PAL region. 160 games over 365 days, let the games begin. This time we are going where no game collector has been before, to brand new unexplored places. A brand new gaming experience here in the city of Norwich, which is a fantastic place to live as a game collector and also to a brand new gaming store. I am all about shining a spotlight on some of the UK's best local game stores in this series and to be able to go to a brand new game store before anyone else is an absolute privilege. And also, I am going behind closed doors of a collector and you will not believe their collection. It is absolutely fantastic and this time you're going to get a sneak peek behind those closed doors. If you haven't seen the first episode of The Platinum Project, I'm going to leave a link in the description down below. But if you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button and please subscribe. As I'm going to be putting out new episodes of this, The Platinum Project, throughout 2023. And trust me, it is a crazy road ahead and I really want you folks along for the ride. Now, let's have a recap of what you missed in episode one. We ended the first episode on 48 games for the PlayStation Platinum Project, which means there is 112 games left to go. There is a long way to go in this challenge, so let's head to our first destination and hunt for that Platinum Gold. Our first stop this time was the OLL Experience, hosted by OLL Games. OLL XP is a free entry weekend packed with exciting gaming experiences and showcases. Supported by the Norwich Games Festival and the best gaming communities around the city, the weekend will be celebrating all aspects of the local games industry, including talks by industry professionals, video editing and live streaming tutorial sessions, esports and events, colleges and universities you can really get into the gaming market, and also they'll be selling. So we are looking for platinum games and this new experience for Norwich. Straight away, I managed to find a massive tub of PS1 games, and there was a few Platinum games spread out between all the Black Label games. It feels weird actually looking for Platinum games in opposed to Black Label games, but this is the Platinum Project, trying to get all 160 of these beautiful Platinum games. There were some really good titles here and some really good prices, but unfortunately there was no games we needed for the collection, but there was loads more to see. So unfortunately there wasn't any Platinum games we needed for the collection this time, but while we're here I think it'd be rude not to look for other video games as they had a really good selection. So you can see here there was loads of Mega Drive games, and I think one of the best surprises about this was everything was at a really good price. So they had Mega Drive games, loads of Master System games. This is what I like about some of these smaller conventions, they have a really good selection of games. And especially with something like the OLLXP event, which is just starting up, it was fairly quiet. Don't get me wrong, it was quite busy. There was a lot of people around. It was quite difficult to film as there was a lot of children around. That's why a lot of these images are very close up. But there were some really good games here. And the entire event was really cool. It was just a wide selection of a little bit of everything for the gaming industry. You know, we had developers there. We had schools and universities for people looking to get into the gaming industry. And of course, we had video games. It was a really cool event. And it's just a Another amazing event brought to my local city of Norwich by OLL Games. It really is a great time to live in the city of Norwich. Of course, the OLL experience wasn't just about buying video games, it was about making video games. And I never knew how many local schools, colleges, and universities offered courses in every kind of area of the gaming industry. I just wish I'd had this OLL experience when I was younger. It'd been an amazing way to kind of learn how easy it is to get into the gaming industry. For the young people in Norwich, it was a really, really awesome experience. We're really lucky as well in Norwich as we actually have a local game developer, Wave Games. Now you keep making some amazing games for the Dreamcast. Games such as Intrepid Izzy, Flea, and they've more recently done a re-release of Postal. That's right, they released Postal for the Sega Dreamcast in 2022. 
This is the thing about indie game developers. We need to support them rather than these big companies as these are the companies that are still making interesting games. And the thing is, these are the companies that need your support. And if you do not support them, they will not be around for long. The OLL experience was an absolutely fantastic day out. I'm looking forward to it building over the years. It was an awesome start. Now back to the games room for some viewer trades. I may not have been able to find any platinum games at OLL experience, but it was definitely that, an experience. It was a really cool event. And they've got some amazing events coming up this year. So make sure you keep an eye on their socials for anything coming up in the future. But one of the main ways I'm trying to build the Platinum Project Collection is by doing trades with you folks, the viewers. And I've been reaching out to people. If you have Platinum games, I will happily trade them with you. And that's what this package is here from a viewer who watched the first episode and reached out and we traded a game. And this is a really big one I definitely wanted for the Platinum Project. One of the best things about the Platinum Project is reaching out to you fellow collectors. And I just love the fact this one was sent to me in a CEX box. This is the great thing about collectors, we know how to recycle. And in here we have an absolutely fantastic game. One of the biggest games I wanted for this collection, Tekken. This is because this is a game, randomly, which I have never played on the PlayStation 1. I know, how could I call myself a PlayStation gamer and I have never played the original fighting game for the PlayStation, but I'm going to make sure I rectify that this episode. This game came to me from a viewer of the channel called Paul and he sent a note, hi Dan, one Tekken for you, enjoy it Paul, and he put that he used an old CX box which the game came in originally. Now, one of the main things about this PlayStation Platinum project is going back and experiencing some of these games. So let's, for the first time ever, jump into Tekken. This has to be one of the best loading screens in any game ever. The fact you actually have something to do while the game loads is just so cool. I never knew this was on the original Tekken. It's a really cool little feature. And yeah, I just guess we're ready to play, so let's jump straight into Tekken. I think the reason I never played the original Tekken is because I jumped in at Tekken 3, which I know is a bit strange, but that was the first Tekken I ever played. And I think this is one of the biggest things about any fighting game, is who you pick as your character. And for me, as a wrestling fan, it just has to be King. You know, at the end of the day, he's a giant wrestler and he's got a tiger for a head. That's absolutely cool as hell. So yeah, let's jump into this, my first ever game of the original Tekken. And the problem is, I'm going to be one of those kind of guys who will just kind of button bash this one. I am not the best at fighting games, so we'll see how this one goes. I think this one thing with like fighting games back in the day. At first, you either had that friend who would let you learn the controls, or they were just absolutely hammering you. But it seems like button bashing this time definitely paid off. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to do quite a few more rounds of Tekken. Here we have our next trade from another viewer of the channel, John. And he really has gone above and beyond with this one. He has gone to the expense of wrapping these up for me. It is like a PlayStation Platinum Christmas morning. Let's jump into this amazing trade. When it comes to unwrapping presents, I don't have the most patience, so I'm just going to jump straight into this one. It is covered in tape, but most of the fun things about unwrapping things are just ripping into it. So let's get into this first game that we traded for the Platinum Project. So the first game we have here is Formula 1 97. And this is in absolutely fantastic condition. This is something I really want to do with the PlayStation Platinum Project, is to get games in fantastic condition. This might not be the most expensive game, but getting games like this in really nice condition is going to be one of the hardest parts of this project. Let's get into the next one of these Platinum games then. And this is the thing, I am always open for trading for Platinums. I share my trade pile periodically on my social, so please follow me there. And if you have Platinum games, let's do ourselves a trade. So jumping into this, the second one, we have one of the most iconic racing games on the PS1, Ridge Racer. And again, this one is in absolutely fantastic condition. And a lot of these games, such as Tekken and Ridge Racer, are games that came out quite early in the PlayStation 1's life cycle. I didn't get a chance to play a lot of these games, but this is one of the best things about the Platinum Project. Going back and experiencing the very best that the PlayStation 1 had to offer. I'm always so humbled by you folks who reach out to me and do trades, and some of you even send me gifts. And John also has included this other gift 
into this tray. So I'm going to jump straight into this one. I kind of think I know what this is. I've been spoke on Instagram for quite a while. Once again, it's very nicely packaged. And jumping into this one, if I can actually get this open. No, I'm going to have to go tribal on this one. And absolutely rip into it. As I said, I have no patience when it comes to wrapping paper. We have this absolutely amazing Soul Calibur 2 strategy guides. So he reached out to me. He knows I'm a massive fan of strategy guides. And it's just... Moments like this that really humble me, you know, I, t I do this channel because of my love of gaming, but when people give back, it just, it brightens my day. So thank you, John, for this amazing item to add to my collection. Speaking of trading for Platinum Games, recently I was lucky enough to be invited by a viewer of the channel to view his collection. And it was absolutely insane. I will have a full video of this collection in the next few weeks because this little clip cannot do it justice. But we also managed to do some trades and I managed to pick up a very nice stack of Platinum Games. So thank you very much for him for reaching out. That amazing collection you saw there was from a fellow collector, ironically also called Dan. So I'll refer to him as Other Dan throughout this video. And trust me, you have not seen anything yet. Me and other Dan went through some of the key items of his collection. I'm going to be showing you all of that in an upcoming video. Trust me. Make sure you subscribe because you do not want to miss that one. But that's not all. I managed to pick up an absolute stack of amazing Platinum games for this, the PlayStation Platinum Project. Let's get through these games then. So first off, we have Alien Trilogy for the PlayStation 1. One of the best value games I think you can get on the PS1. It had all three Alien films. <laughs> and do you know what? I'm just going to go with it. That's all the three Alien films. There is no other Alien films except that original trilogy. Let's just move on. Secondly, we have Destruction Derby. Now, this was actually one of my very favourite racing games on the original PS1. Probably it was bettered by Destruction Derby 2, but I just love the literal destructibility of this game. It made it such a must-play racing title. Next off, we have... A kind of subsection of games that I've never played because at this time I was not looking to play kind of that kiddie based game. So games like Disney's Treasure Planet and also I'm not the biggest watcher of Disney films. I've never seen Disney's Treasure Planet. So let me know in the comments down below if I even need to watch the film or the game. Next up we have another Disney game, Peter Pan Adventures in Neverland. Again, another game I haven't played, but I do know some of these Disney tie-in games can be really good. So let me know in the comments down below if I'm missing out on that one. This, for me, is a very, very iconic game. Like, first-person shooters are few and far between on the PlayStation 1. It may not have aged fantastically, but Medal of Honor, absolutely. When you played this game back in the day, it blew me away. And... Speaking of tactical shooters, we normally think of Metal Gear Solid, but we cannot forget the Siphon Filter games. These were absolutely incredible games. And if nothing else, there was nothing funnier than tasing somebody until they caught fire. There is three Siphon Filter games to collect for the Platinum Project. I think this is the second one, so we are nearly there on the trilogy, but it's just another kind of entire series of games that Sony's let die. So please, Sony, bring back Siphon Filter. Trust me, you do not want to miss the tour of Other Dan's game collection. It is absolutely mind-blowing. He has some things I have never seen before and may never see again. It was absolutely incredible. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll put that video up in the next few weeks. Now, let's get back on the road hunting for those Platinum Games. Here we are then back on the road again, searching for those Platinum Games. And this time we are in Fetford and we are heading to the local CX store there to see if we can find a couple more Platinum Games for the collection. Wish me luck. I've had quite a lot of luck in this CX as they seem to have really good quality control. They only take games in that are in fantastic condition. So I was super pleased when I could see not one, but two Platinum games we needed here for the collection. And this is the thing. Sometimes in CX you can get these games at a really good price. And one of these games we're going to pick up was actually surprisingly cheap. Just over £5 for one of these games. This is one of the advantages of the Platinum Project. Some of these games you can pick up for super cheap. But I thought while we're in CX, let's have a look at some of the peripherals for the PS1. They had a really good selection of memory cards in here. But one of these controllers had definitely seen better days. Like... This is a grim reminder of a lot of this retro stuff can fade and become sun damaged over time. Let's go back to the games and I'll show you which two games we picked up for the project. 
Here we are then back from CX, and while it was a very good selection of PlayStation 1 games, sadly there's only two Platinum games, but we did manage to get two absolute bangers. The first of which, Time Crisis, without a doubt, one of my very, 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 very favourite games on the PlayStation 1. One of the things I love about the PlayStation 1 is light gun games, and this is probably one of the greatest, well it is one of the greatest, if not the greatest light gun game of all time. To be able to pick this up for £6 is an absolute bargain. Secondly, we have Crash Bandicoot 3 Warped. This is one of the slightly higher titles. The thing is, with a lot of these titles in the Platinum Project, they are fairly cheap. This one was £15. But if you remember, in last time's episode, we had that copy of Grand Theft Auto. So, I bought that off eBay, mistakenly thought I needed it for the collection and didn't. But I did manage to trade that one in to CX for £12. So I managed to pick up this game for just £3. So we now have the original Crash Bandicoot and this Crash Bandicoot. So my eyes are set for Crash Bandicoot 2. Our final stop this time is a brand new gaming shop in the town of Attleborough, Omega's Emporium. And even more excitingly, this was before the store was open to the public. So this is an exclusive first look at its brand new game store. I was lucky enough to visit Omega's Emporium before it was open to the public. This was about three days before it opened, so good news, you too can now visit the store. They were still setting up when I went in here. This is about three days before it's open to the public, but already the shelves were stacking up with some amazing inventory. There was some really good boxed consoles here and an absolute wall of games for the PlayStation 2. Of course, with all new game stores, it's all about inventory. And there was some amazing stuff already in the store, but I am guessing over the next few months, they're going to be taking in a lot of trade-ins. And I think there's going to be some amazing games on offer here. But right out of the gate, like the PlayStation 2 selection was absolutely incredible. This is one of the biggest selections of PS2 games I've seen in a gaming store for a long, long while. And the best part about this PS2 selection, it was all in alphabetical order. It is such a small thing, but when you have a massive collection of games, having these games on the shelf in alphabetical order just means finding the games you need for your collection is so much easier. And I just love the way they were just stacked one deep. It was an absolutely amazing PS2 display. Omega's Emporium also had an amazing selection of PlayStation 3 games. And I've said it once, I've said it a million times, now is the time to buy for the PlayStation 3, as these games are cheap at the moment. But I think with a lot of these games, they're only going to go up in value over the next few years. And trust me, now is the time to buy these games while they're readily available and at a decent price. One of my favourite parts of any gaming store is always the glass cabinets. And they had a really good selection of not just Switch games, but loads of Game Boy Advance games. There were some really heavy hitter titles here. But for a new gaming store, I was actually amazed by how many boxed consoles they had. Look at this Super Nintendo. The Starwing variant is probably my favourite Super Nintendo console. And also one of the OG Mega Drives. There were some also dice, which if you're a D&D &D player, all stores should carry dice. But it isn't just console games that Omega's Emporium is going to be carrying. They're also going to be carrying bits for PC gaming. And I don't think I see many gaming stores who cross over into PC parts and PC gaming. So it's really cool because there is a lot of PC gamers out there. Being able to buy this stuff on the high street is a real advantage. This is the thing. These are the kind of stores we need to support. The high street gaming stores. Heading into the back room of Omega's Emporium, we have one of my favourite parts of this store. The testing station. This is a setup so you can test any of the games you want to buy from the store. So you have both a modern and a retro setup. So you can see here we have the modern setup with some of the newer consoles and a flat screen TV. But next to that, of course, we have a CRT TV to play these retro consoles. Because in my eyes, if you are able to and have the room, CRT is the only way to play these retro games. They just look so much better. And it's just all about the experience. I think every gaming shop should have a testing area like this. It's an absolutely awesome feature. At the back of the room, we had another cabinet. And this was absolutely stacked with some of the higher priced games. We have some absolutely amazing GameCube games in here. Some more retro consoles. Like that SNES was in really, really nice condition. Some more box consoles. I was surprised from such a new store how many box consoles they had. I don't think I've ever seen a box Saturn. There was, of course, some Platinum games. But unfortunately, we already had these ones in the collection. But... 
There was just so many good things in this store. And I think over the next few months, as the store grows, the selection's just going to get better. And it was really exciting to be able to go into a game store before anyone else. There was still a bit of setting up to do, so it was a bit rough around the edges. But I think Omega's Emporium is going to be amazing. When I visited, they were in the middle of putting up these amazing plastic shelves on this back wall here. And what did I spy? Some platinum games. So I think in the next few months, this wall will be absolutely stacked with games. So they were just setting up as I was here today. You can see that they've got some amazing games for the Xbox 360 and the PS1. But of course, you saw it there. There was a couple more platinum games. And thankfully, I am happy to say I managed to pick one up for the platinum project. It's only a small title, but... Formula One is one of those titles that's going to be hard to find because these are the kind of games that people would normally use for boxes or just people don't keep in fantastic condition. If you're a PS1 gamer like myself, you'll know these kind of front covers that's often why, fall out of the games, but the this was in a fantastic yes. condition and for £2 is a great one to cross off our list. As I said earlier in the video, if we are out looking for Platinum games and find our games, it is rude not to pick them up. And I had to pick up this copy of Alien Trilogy for the second time in this video, this time for the Sega Sand. This was in absolutely amazing condition. And it just goes to show, Omega's Emporium has a bright future. They have a really good selection of games. They're at a good price and it was a pleasure to shop there. And I wish them all the luck in the future. Now let's take it back to the games room for the last time to see these final pickups for the Platinum Project. Here we are then back in the games room for the final time. And I have to say what an absolute privilege and an honor it was to visit Omega's Emporium before anyone else. It is so exciting to have another independent local game store near me. And these are the kind of stores that really need people's support. I enjoy going to CX as much as the next person, but you have to support your local game store, especially in the present financial climate. They are gonna struggle. And this is one thing I really want to do with this series. I really want to put a spotlight on as many amazing local game stores as possible, both from around me and from all around the UK. So if you have a favourite local game store, let me know in the comments down below. As I said, this challenge is going to take me nationwide and who knows, I may be in your town. Here it is then, the final PlayStation 1 game to add to this, the PlayStation Platinum Project this time, Formula 1 for the PlayStation 1. So we managed to add not one, but two Formula 1 games into the collection this time. And this is what I love about these independent game shops. I managed to pick this game up for just two pounds. It is in really good condition. It is complete. I wish I could have spent more in there and supported the store a lot more, but trust me, I'll be going back definitely in the next few weeks and months and years and it will just basically become somewhere I continuously go to. I have a kind of loop of collecting around me and that will definitely be on my kind of loop of going around and collecting and hopefully in the future I'll get even more platinum games in and I can help support this growing new business. Here we have it then folks, one of my favourite parts of the PlayStation Platinum project is crossing these games off the list and being one step closer to that complete PlayStation 1 Platinum collection and just popping them on the shelves along with the other games. Each game is one step closer to our final goal and I hope you stick around for this wild ride. There we have it then folks, that was episode 2 of this the PlayStation Platinum Project. And in this episode, we added 12 games to the collection. And this means we end this episode at a massive milestone. We have 100 games left to find to complete this, the complete UK PAL PS1 Platinum Collection. But we have a long road ahead of us and I cannot do it without your help. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, subscribe so you don't miss any episodes. And if you really wanna help, and trust me, you have the power to make this series work. Consider sharing this to your socials. Tell all your friends. Help me spread the word of my challenge. I am gonna need a lot of help to find these last 100 games, but I trust you folks are there to help me on my road. There we have it then, folks. That was the second episode of this, the PlayStation Platinum Project. 100 games to go, but trust me, it is gonna be a wild ride. Let the games begin. See y'all soon.